Hi, and welcome back. In our last tutorial, we had a kind of a conflicting statement there. We said we would uh, do a tutorial on the keyboard shortcuts and how to customize some new settings for yourself there that uh, might match some of the keyboard shortcuts that you are used to using from other uh, programs. However, um, we also said that we would get started with a sample edit as well. And so what I'm going to do is recommend that uh, if you're interested in customizing your keyboard shortcuts, there is a free tutorial over there at ediustips.com and uh, it's under uh, free video tutorials on Edius 7. If you go there and uh, one of the videos there is all about customizing your keyboard shortcuts and not much has really changed between Edius 7 and Edius version 8 as it relates to keyboard shortcuts. So if you are interested in uh, that, I would recommend you going there and uh, taking a look at that free tutorial. And for that matter, uh, most of the video series that we have done on Edius 7 would be very applicable to Edius 8. And so if you're anxious uh, to learn more about Edius and want to have access to a lot of good reference material there on Edius, we have uh, a number of tutorials over there that you would probably find very helpful. Just sign up for a membership. It's uh, only 20 bucks for a month, and uh, there are some other options there that might save you even some more money. So recommend that. And uh, that being out of the way, I think we'll get started with our sample edit. What I've decided to do is uh, use an edit that I have already completed. I've chosen this one because it has a lot of interesting, challenging uh, aspects to it. It has source material coming from a variety of different cameras, there's still images, there's graphics, there's narration, music, and uh, so it I think will be a good sample edit uh, of a typical promotional video and uh, you can follow step by step through how to get started. I think we'll do about maybe the first five tutorials on this sample edit and place them up here at uh, YouTube and uh, give you an idea of the type of instruction that we're doing for Edius 8. And then if you're interested in learning more about Edius 8, we can uh, recommend once again going to ediustips.com to complete uh, the uh, series of tutorials on Edius 8. Okay, with that, let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to start a typical project in Edius 8. Let's fire up the program here. I'm still actually working with the trial version of the software. I thought that uh, many of you might have also just be checking out the program and working with the trial version of the software. I think it's actually identical to the actual real uh, version of the software, but just in case there are a little, few differences, I thought as long as we're recording these tutorials, we might as well be using the same version of the software that many of you would be using as you're checking out the software. How long it takes Edius to get started depends a lot on how many hard drives you have connected to your computer that might be sleeping while it starts. Uh, it might uh, also depend on the type of virus software that you've got going running in the background. In fact, I recommend uh, while you're editing not to go on the internet and uh, shut off your virus software. And how you do that is go down here to uh, in Windows, show hidden icons right click on your virus protection software and temporarily disable it and i'm going to set mine to until restart hit ok and now we won't have any further interference from our virus protection software and as long as i'm not surfing the internet or checking emails and clicking on links that i shouldn't be while i'm editing i should be okay in fact a lot of uh, i should say a lot of editors who are serious about video editing just have standalone edit computers that they only use for editing videos and only go onto the internet with that computer when they need to update software. And uh, some even are brave enough not to have any virus protection software at all. They, they're going to trusted sites when they update their software and then they disconnect from the internet. And if you are serious about video editing, that might be a good idea because the virus protection software can conflict with the edit uh, software. Cause it to start slower and actually affect the real-time capability of Edius. Okay, here's our opening dialog box. Right now we have two users that we've uh, started. And I'm going to choose the my own profile here. 
It's already chosen, actually. We also have uh, options to start programs that we've already started here. And as you continue to work with EDIUS, this list will grow and uh, you'll be able to quickly start a program that, or a project that you've already been working on. But in this case, we're going to start a new project. Now, a few things you can do here is first of all, name your new project. I'm going to call this learning video. And in the next box, you can choose which hard drive you would like to save this project to. It, by default, presents the hard drive that you chose to save EDIUS projects uh, the first time that you ran EDIUS, but you're not stuck to that. You can, at this point, choose any hard drive that you would like to save the project. And there's a couple of different approaches to this. Re EDIUS recommends that you choose a hard drive for a particular project and then save all of the media that you are planning to use in that project to that hard drive. I use a little bit different approach and we'll explain that in a minute. But uh, here is where you can plug in what hard drive you want to save the project to. And you can choose whether or not to create a folder that has that project name. And that's usually a good idea to have that checked. Now the next question that you probably have is, of all of these presets that EDIUS made for us the first time that we ran the program and we checked a few boxes there, created all these presets, what preset should I choose to start my project? Well, the answer to that question lies primarily on what type of footage you're working with. So for example, if you're editing a project that has 4K footage, you'll want to check out one of these 4K options and pick um, a frame rate that works best for you. If, for example, all the footage that you shot was shot at 29.97 progressive, then you'd want to uh, choose that preset. If you happen to have a camera that's capable of shooting 60 frames a second, uh, and that's what most of your footage is, then you'd want to use this preset here that uh, is all set up for that type of frame rate. If most of your footage is high definition, then you'll want to check out the high definition presets. Once again, analyze your footage, try and understand the footage that was shot for your project. And if it was a project that was shot primarily in a DSLR camera, for example, it's most likely been shot at 29.97 progressive. That's what the little P stands for there. If it was shot on an older video camera, the kind that is used more for TV production, then it's probably uh, been shot in an interlaced format. And that would show up under high definition at 59.94i for interlaced. Now, some of you probably have the question, well, what if some of my media has been shot with a, a broadcast camera shooting interlaced video, then half of the media has been shot with a DSLR camera shooting progressive video, which option should I choose? And it's a good question. You could probably go either way because EDIUS will conform the non-standard footage. When you throw a clip on the timeline, if it's progressive clip in an interlaced project, it's going to conform that progressive clip to an interlaced clip in the background without you having to do anything. It's going to render it, uh, convert it, conform it, and export it uh, directly to the interlaced file without uh, you really having to do or think too much about it. That's just what EDIUS does. You, you can mix formats on the timeline and uh, EDIUS will figure it all out. As to which approach would be the better, should I conform progressive footage to interlace or should I conform interlace footage to a progressive project? Ask yourself the question, what's my final destination for this project? Am I going to be sending this to broadcast? Is it going to be going on TV somewhere? Is it a TV spot? Is it going to be mastered to DVD and, and uh, replicated, distributed on DVD? Well, if your answer to either one of those questions is yes, then you probably want to use a, a, an interlaced project because both of those destinations require interlaced video. DVDs and broadcast need to be interlaced video. Even if all of the footage was shot at Progressive, the final product still needs to be exported to an interlaced file. And uh, so if your, your video is half and half, but it's going to TV or, or DVD, then you might as well edit in an interlaced project. If your video is only ever going to be shown on the internet and distributed as a digital file for people to watch on their computers, then you might as well edit your project in Progressive 
even if half your footage is in interlaced. And this particular project that we're working on is kind of a, a good example of that because half the media was shot in interlaced, half of it was in progressive. And the first time that I did this edit, I did edit it in an interlaced project. So just for kicks and giggles, I think that I'm going to this time edit it in a progressive project. So I'm going to click on that preset and we'll notice over here a list of all of the settings that come with that preset. We can go through it. We see that our field order is indeed progressive. Just to confirm that it's in full 1920 by 1080. The frame rate is 29.97. And I might maybe mention something right here and now. If you're working with a Canon camera, even though the menu option on your Canon camera suggests that you are shooting 30 frames a second, in reality, the footage that you shoot with a Canon camera is 29.97. So do not make the mistake of changing that frame rate to 30 frames a second. I did that the first few edits that I did after I started shooting with my Canon DSLR. I just went with what it said on the back of the Canon menu, 30 frames a second. And so what I did was I hit Customize when I went in here. I hit OK and I changed the frame rate to 30 frames a second to match what I thought what the Canon camera was shooting based on what it said on the menu options at the back of the camera. And as a result, as Edius tried to make up the difference, make up extra frames between these two settings, it caused kind of ghosting effect, especially if there was a lot of motion in the shot. And so Please do not make the mistake of setting your frame rate to 30 frames a second to try and match what it says on the back of a Canon camera menu. In reality, these cameras are shooting 29.97. Okay, so we have chosen a preset. We've hit the custom button. We can go through and, and check and make sure all of the settings match uh, the way we want to edit and over here that all of our settings in the setup are fine the way we like them we like to uh, render in grass valley hq fine we like the overscan to be zero our audio reference level now this this is really only important if you are sending your end product to a tv station and they want to have a reference level for your audio and depending on what country you're living in the tv stations might require this to be set to something different here in Canada, and a lot of countries prefer to have it at minus 12 dB. The resampling method for, for your, most of your editing project is uh, good to have it at fast and sharp. There will be some times when we'd like to change this to um, high quality Lanzos 3, and we'll let you know when that's important. But for the most part, fast and sharp is what we're looking for. This sequence setup information here can be changed later also in the program. You can, under sequence settings, change this. But again, this is really only important if you are sending out to broadcast and you need to be sure that your project is uh, dropping frames so that uh, it can conform to broadcast standards. And uh, that, again, is important sometimes uh, to have the time code TV, some TV stations are still very strict about uh, time code if you're sending them a tape. And uh, for video tracks, I like two, no VA tracks, no T tracks, four audio tracks. That was, that's all good, so I'm going to hit OK. And we have started our first project using a progressive preset, and uh, we are ready to go. So that does it for our first lesson on how to get started editing a project in EDIUS.